So in the catalog, I put these three fellows on the same spread because their faces are all so different. And yet to me, they always reminded me like of, of the young university students in 1700s walking in the streets and going and doing their classes. Very, very distinctive hairstyles, very distinctive facial models on every one of them. And I just really loved, loved them. Um, so let's show them to you one by one. First, I'll show you his face a little more clearly. And see, I think you could do a little vignette with these, and I think one of them should be holding a book, and the other could be sat, sitting with a big leather chair next to him, and maybe you'd need to have a dog on the floor in front of them. Okay, and look at the variation in the painting of their, of their boots. They're all basically the same boot, except this fellow has much more detail, like his boots were worn out a little more. But they very, very um, famously will have the stockings. And then this one has the added detail at the upper end of the boot with the brim or the rim at the upper end. Let's turn him around so you can see his face in more detail. Who do you like the best? I just can't decide. Oh, he has a little silver um, water bottle he's carrying around, too. It might not be water. Water. this fellow with this kind of like a page boy look to his hair. And then we have, he's just rushed in to the classroom late carrying his books. See why I had such a good time with these. They do appeal to the imagination. He even has a detail of the part in his hair which I just think is so fine. These were not, I, mean, I know it was, um, it may not have been fine art, but to me it's, it's very fine art. Maybe not with a capital F for fine art, but just fabulous work. This fellow has a really interesting face. He's been out walking in the mountains, gathering the mountain goats. He has his walking stick. He has his fine, um, I don't think he was gathering the goats because he's got too fine a clothes on him. And again, has the same style of shoe. This way I kind of start looking at the shoes of all of these gentlemen and you'll see how they are so similar. And when I pull his hat back, look, bald pate. Different variations on all of them. Very interesting. And this fellow, and we posed him with the goat so you could see how these animals were. I mean, they really are exquisite works of sculpture in themselves. And he's a very, very wonderful young man. And he has the hair back at the crown and then the curls at the back of the head. Again, so very, very realistic hairstyle. But look at his face, how intense it is. Again, enamel eyes, and then the painted features, and these are all hand-painted. And then the mountain goat, very realistically done. The, the collecting of these carved animals is um, a, special, a subspecialty within itself in the Neapolitan doll field, and this would, would be particularly desirable because of its, its action. And then we have another handsome fellow with his hair all combed forward. It has museum markings on the back of his neck, so I suspect at one point he lived in a museum. This is a session number on the back of his head. So the museum found him worthy of having. Then we have another gentleman with the bald pate and the tuft of hair at um, the 
on his forehead, which is great. And he's holding his hat. He's proud of his bald head. He doesn't care. He's going to show it for all to see. And he has this wonderful smile. And again, look at the detail on that little face, the detail of the carving. The um, laughter lines are sculpted into the cheekbones. I mean, it's just really, really fine work. And finally, we're showing here our happy musician. He is feeling the beat. One of the things I hope you can take from these videos that's hard to capture in and looking at the catalog is that you can see the scale and the different size of them. So if you're trying to make your decision on, you know, who you have room for to come and live in your house, it gives you more of a, a sense of what that would be. Now I'm going to show you some beautiful ladies. So we were just looking at these handsome and some not so handsome gentlemen. And I thought I would give you a selection of some of the really fascinating women in this collection because again look at this group I have here in the table and you tell me if you see any that have the same face the same hairstyle no they're all all different and that is what is so absolutely wonderful about them I I mean I could I could live with any of them I just think they're just great and I have been living with them for two months and now they're ready to go on and to go to your homes and I just hope that you love them like I do so I put her up to start with in the centerpiece because she is one of my favorites in the auction. I like her size. I like her presentation. I like everything about her. I love her wonderful face. And what you don't see and will never see in the catalog because we didn't photograph it. So you're going to see it here. We're going to turn her around. You're going to see her profile. And then check out the hair. Is that a rare hairstyle? with the double coiled buns at the back. Very, very rare and absolutely wonderful. All of these hairstyles have this very deep comb marking throughout them. They're just wonderful. And then this particular one, look at her ears when she comes around. The detail of the sculpting of her ears. And then look at the little, like a, almost like a little coronet of little curls framing her face. And then look at that face. Okay, you just take one home. Just take one home. Put it in your display case or put it under a glass dome, and this could be a beauty. And again, I think holding, having them hold a little basket is, you know, just finishes them off. She has her wonderful piece of jewelry, two pieces of jewelry. She has molded bosoms, so she clearly was one of the favored. Very beautiful, beautiful doll. have another one of my favorites is because I think she has a gorgeous face also. I'm turning her around so you can see her hair is sculpted into a coiled bun at the back of her head and has a, a, a metallic cap holding it together. But there it is. Gorgeous face. One of the things when I, I always people say well you know should should I move in to get some things from this field? These are so affordable. I don't mean that they're pennies, but I mean for comparison, any of these ladies are much less money than a French poupée is. You can buy just one or two of these and have them featured in your collection and you have a wonderful presentation for what they are. They're, let me see, do the math, um, 250 years old? Come on, these are fabulous pieces of art to have in your home. For that, they are so, so affordable and such wonderful work. And look at her. They were very kind in pre presenting what I would call the, the women with graying hair. And she has, again, they clearly the hair, hair was much looser and it was like come back gracefully. It was not severe at all. It was looped over her ears and then carried to the back into this coiled curl that sort of tumbles on down. Very, very charming style. And she's again wearing her um, folklore costume. One of the things that I noticed as I was cataloging this, I was starting to notice all of the construction of these costumes and realizing that the sleeves were almost like a, 
a separate piece with, and sometimes there, there'd actually be an opening between the sleeve and the bodice, in, much in the same way, for example, that a suit of armor would be being made because it left greater, it allowed it to be fit very tight to the body, and yet it gave arm movement uh, to the person who was wearing it. This is a, what the doll is wearing is actually a replica of what a real person would be wearing. So that must have been the reason for that style was to have that kind of freedom of movement and then a little bow would cover where the separation was. Quite intriguing, beautiful jewelry she's wearing and she's carrying her lovely porcelain bowl. Very, very beautiful face. We're going to be talking about artist doll, dolls that are attributed to certain artists in a moment. And one of the artists that I will mention to you is um, Lorenzo Mosca. And this doll has been attributed to him. Um, Leonardo Mosca, Lorenzo Mosca was a really, was, of all of the sculptures, was very famous, uh, fascinating to me. He actually was a bureaucrat. He worked in the government in one of the counting offices. I, I don't know, couldn't understand exactly what he did. But he was not considered a fine artist. And in fact, the other art community considered him a dilettante, Mosca. But some of his dolls that have been attributed to him, and there, ha there is a, an inventory of works that he did that appear in some of the archives in Naples. Um, he really liked to work with highly characterized people. And here is a very, very beautiful, kindly faced older woman carrying her the stick of provolone cheese that she has made and offered for sale. And I mean, the production of the things like the cheeses and vegetables were important too. This just still even has like it's a little um, identification tag on it for the buyer. A wonderful piece. Check her face, very gaunt, sunken cheekbones. Look at the profile of it. Look at her nose and her chin. Works of art. They truly are works of art. I found her to be very, very different, a different face from the others. And I think it was the eyes. If you start to look at them all, she has much bigger eyes. It's there. The other eyes all tend to be like downcast or more into the face or smaller. And she has these wide open, innocent looking eyes. And it kind of goes with that little shy, tentative smile that she's holding. And she's carrying here and she's offering a big pewter bowl of some kind of wonderful treat. And we turn her around so you can see her hair all the way around. And let me tip her back just to make sure you can see the face so clearly. And then, Again, those of you who are always looking for dolls for your miniature rooms or your doll houses, another miniature size, and this one wearing her original uh, costume, regional costume, with a wonderful, wonderful face. She's absolutely great. I'm going to tip her up so we'll be sure to get her. And we have the two princesses, the two royal princesses. And I'm showing them together so you can see, even though because of their costuming, they appear to be very similar, I want you to actually note their hairstyles, which are so extraordinary. So I'll show you all the way around. I'll show you their hairstyles side by side so you can see how different they are. And then we'll turn it more. And then from the other side. They're wonderful jewelry. They're very, very lavish costume. And let me just tip it back so you can see their faces in the front of their hair, which is totally different from one to the other as well. Two very beautiful ladies. <laughs> 